Hey everybody, this is Robot here, Vespa Motorsport, ScooterWest.com. So what am I working on here? Well, this happens to be the raffle scooter for Amera Vespa for 2023 in Flagstaff, Arizona. So January 1st to January 4th. Um, if you're anywhere in North America, I hope to see you there because the whole team at Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West and a lot of us San Diego scooterists are gonna be there. Flagstaff, that's just a hop, skip and a jump for a drive to get out to the next state over in Arizona. I'm pretty excited it's there. Flagstaff's really cool. It's um, up there at 7,000 feet, kind of like Denver. Uh, very mountainous, very different than what most people think of Arizona, where it's very desert. Uh, really cool, like mountain village. And in June, it's gonna be, I think, the perfect temperature. So last week, I talked about the scooter. Doesn't look like it's gonna need all that much. It started right up. I was thinking I was gonna have to go through the whole entire fuel system and do quite a bit to get it going. But I figured I'd start and show you guys what we're gonna do to prep the scooter for the raffle. Well, of course, the most important thing here, that's what I'm working on right now, of course, is the shameless uh, marketing material from Vespa Motorsport. Got our license frame, you can find those on the website, and the all popular Italian flag uh, license hardware, MI-75, I think is what these are. But more important than putting a license on it, you could just ride it dirty like that. Um, no license needed, you know, it looks like a new vehicle. Sure it does. Um, we're gonna put a headlight in, we're gonna put a battery in this and see if it starts. And maybe I'll have enough time today to even put tires and start replacing some of the rubber bits. So let's get right to it. All right, so let's get this left hand cowl off and just like a Vespa PX, you open up the seat. You got this lever right here, pull it back and unhooks the cowl. So what do we have under here? A really old battery with a completely incorrect battery strap. So let's get that out of here. Uh, I might even pull the spare off, check that out. So again, the scooter has only got 1400 miles on it. It's a really low miles example of a mid 2000s uh, Stella, which essentially is just a pattern of the original Vespa PX, started kind of in 1985 and pretty much was manufactured all the way up till 2017. I actually have one of the last year uh, PXs. You can see some of the old videos uh, featuring that bike. I think our one video that has almost a million views is one of those last two stroke PXs. A uh, very, very similar scooter, but it's made in India by LML. Um, and they were imported by Genuine Scooters um, that also import the Buddy scooter. Back in the day, they had the two strokes ones. And of course, I would say this is probably the best one to have because it carries the most parts that are uh, patterned after the real Vespa. The four stroke ones that shift aren't too bad. The automatic ones, those ones are pretty difficult to get parts and they're very different even though they do look like a classic Vespa. So get the spare tire out of here as well. I kind of want to air it up, see if it holds air. It's a nice old school Continental Zippy, Zippy 3. It's probably a little bit too old to be safely riding on, but it's uh, perfectly adequate for a spare tire as long as the inner tube holds air. Got that little uh, shield right there. The incorrect battery strap, I'll let that hit the ground. That's no problem there. All right, so let's air up this tire. It's got some air in it. Um, got this handy cordless air compressor. I'll talk about this more in another video. Uh, real handy to have on either a vintage or modern Vespa. They've gotten so good because they're all cordless. They have a nice built-in pressure gauge. Find out on the Scooter West web store and it's uh, tool air. You can change the, the reading. You know, if you want PSI um, bars or different, different readings of pressure, you can set up your own right there. So, and I don't want to go all the way up to 36, but I'll show you how that works here. Pretty much connect it up and it just airs up the tire. So, and it will stop at that set pressure. All right, so before putting a new battery, you want to have a brand new battery strap. Uh, this one is the incorrect battery strap. If you have the original battery strap, it's completely rotted. If you're wondering what the part number for the correct longer battery strap is, it's 218812. And you just pretty much hook it right on the bottom there. We got the correct battery for this. 
Sometimes I do upgrade them to a sealed battery, but this, this is just a tried and true older style battery, the YB9B, which is kind of the premium um, uh, Umicron UASA battery. And we'll just put the battery straps. The YB9B for electric start uh, Vespa PX. Because the way I like taking this, obviously I probably should wear some glasses on this, but just put a flat blade screwdriver and roll that right onto the, the hook right here. And the battery's all in place. One thing I noticed, they didn't have the correct battery to begin with and they didn't have the vent installed. And that's pretty important because otherwise you just spew acid vapors on areas of the scooter that it shouldn't have uh, acid vapors. Um, if you're wondering for Stella, there's your fuse holder right behind there. Got to take your spare tire off. Um, hopefully we don't have any problems or shorts. Should, should be good. This low miles. Hook it up. And do the positive terminal first, which is this one that has like a boot on it. They don't see a little bit of the red wire and also a tab on the, the wire that shows a positive symbol. And kind of one of the biggest pitfalls of these Stellas is a lot of the rubber bits start to degrade. And you'll see that maybe not on this video, but the next video I'll probably go through a lot of those parts and replace it. But some seem to hold up, like this little boot that's for the, the wire on the, the battery still seems to be in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of deterioration right there. That might be a pretty hard part to get. And we'll do the negative terminal. Keep in mind these posts are made of lead, so I don't want to be putting your hands in your mouth after doing something like this. Probably even want to wear gloves, but uh, sometimes it's nice to have the fuel without gloves. So just keep that in mind. And the old battery, you definitely don't want to throw that in the trash. Uh, you got this rubber hose. Most people throw it away and you wonder why you have a corroded uh, scooter that pushes right onto that little fitting right there. And the Stella has got a nice little hook right here. A little loop to hold that hose. And of course that hose is a little bit too long so you can just cut that. And there's the battery in there. So I might leave the spare tire off and just see if everything works electrically on this scooter. We know it starts at Kickstart last time. Um, So let's see what goes on. So make sure it's in neutral, it is on the lift right here. Um, with these Stellas, not much really comes on until you start the scooter, you get a horn. So that runs off the battery. And of course the electric start runs off the battery. So you gotta pull the clutch in. And of course it starts right up. See the high beam, low beams working. Uh, uh, the turn sails are working. Brake switch is working. Making a lot of noise here, but I think we're we're in business uh, electrically wise. I don't think I'm gonna have to do anything to it. So let's get that spare tire back on it. Uh, probably one last thing I will check is just make sure it's charging. I'll do that off camera. So, all right, so let me check the charging system. This is a handy little charging test. Uh, the battery's a little bit low just because I cranked it, probably put on an uh, overnight charge. So let's see what happens right here. Let's get it started up. And we'll give it a couple revs. I'll tell you one thing about Estella. They do not charge all that well. And there it is, just starting to charge. And I'll tell you about the best you can get out of a, a Stella charging system, about 13.5 volts, you know, um, um, a modern scooter that has a three-phase charging system, like any of the modern twist and go scooters, the fuel injected scooters, those charge more like a car. They'll charge all the way up to about 14 and a half volts. So one thing with the Stella is if you're gonna put this in the garage, I would suggest putting like a battery tender on the battery when you're not using it, just to keep the battery charge topped off. And we'll go ahead and put the spare tire on. And of course, the, the battery is nice and easy to access the terminals. I do like that about these. Um, just take the cowl off and you have that easy access to the battery.
All right, so let's see what kind of rat nest we have underneath the handlebar cover. Uh, just taking in the four screws that hold this plastic handlebar cover off. They're all under here. They're all still here. That's doing good so far. A lot of times they vibrate out or just somebody takes this apart, doesn't bother putting them back in. And some other things we'll do, we'll just get rid of these rubber bits on the mirrors. I'll cut them right off, but probably more importantly, there's a, a little boot that covers the wiring for that front brake switch. And I'll go ahead and replace that. So you could be careful with these handlebar covers. It's gonna be a lot of wiring. You're gonna have to push the uh, speedometer cable up. So from the bottom, kind of start just push it up and that kind of pushes the whole entire cover right off. And to get it all the way out of the way, the camera doesn't get this, is the knurled nut that threads onto the bottom of the speedometer. We'll get a needle nose on that. So we'll go ahead and loosen the speedometer, drive right from the center bottom of that speedometer. We're gonna leave all the electrical cables connected don't want to jinx this bike and uh, disconnect something and have something in the electrical system no longer work. Go ahead and fold that backwards. And the area of interest is this headlight that's falling apart. So you have several wires on the back. Actually, I'll just pull the whole headlight bulb out just to get out of the way to show you what we got. The old school bulb holder, you got purple for your high beam, brown for the low beam. Should be similar on the new replacement. And you have the second purple that's for a running light. Um, kind of throw you off. The larger purple terminals for the high beam of the headlight, the smaller purple terminals for this, a little running light. Um, so I'll just have that noted in the back of my head when it comes time to replace it with a new headlight assembly. These were never known to be all that good. You can even see the brackets on these Stella headlights, just plastic. And we'll replace it with a similar style um, PX headlight replacement. So you get the two screws to the side, loosen that. Let's see what we got here. So you got a little cap pots right off that little fastener in the center. That's your adjustment. It's a seven millimeter. And just hold the whole headlight assembly while get that out. There we go. Got some washers under there as well. So that thing's trash, we'll just throw that away. Okay, so we got the basic replacement headlight assembly, 163, 685. Um, this is just a classic style headlight. There's a little bit more modern kind of 2000s style headlight that has a clear lens that's also available that was found on the 2011 and later um, PXs that we have available, the original Piaggio one, so it's pretty good quality. You got the bulb socket and you have the headlight assembly. And you can see this thing's built with much better quality than that original Stella one. It's got metal bracketry on it and the silicone that holds the lens is kind of just a little bit better than what originally was. Nice brand new headlight assembly. All works pretty much the same. Put the bulbs in there. This nice, beautiful pink um, bulb holder and it snaps right in here. And of course you got way more terminals than you need. You just need the high beam and low beam for the, um, the headlight. It's probably even possible just to move this old headlight assembly over. Sometimes they change. I could see that the the city position lights in a different spot, so not quite the same. So we'll just move the bulbs over to this assembly. And these are bayonet bases, so you kind of give them a little twist, pull them out, they're just the old fashioned style bulbs. Gotta be really careful with them because they're pretty fragile, the little uh, tabs that kind of hold the the bulbs make sure the contacts are making contact with the two lead terminals on the bottom. 
They're just kind of finicky. They're not quite as robust as like modern stuff where it's got nice seal connectors. Just kind of the way they did it back in the day. Let's make sure that's making contact as well. So let's see how this all fits here. So go ahead and set that in place. Uh, the only way the aim is we'll probably have to start the, the scooter and um, and see how the aim is, you know, with when you're sitting on a scooter. There is actually a proper procedure for aiming a headlight, get the right level, and I can go into that today, but. So as with many of these vintage parts, I need some adjustment. I can't quite get this centered, and you can see that the headlight's a little closer on this side than the other, the left side there. So you could just use some pliers, kind of uh, make some uh, minor adjustments to these metal brackets. See how the headlight shifted over and then kind of just double check to see if we can get the screw to line up. It looks like I'm pretty close right now. Probably don't really need those little fiber washers that were in there. But yeah, pretty close right there. And then just go ahead and tighten this up. And if, again, you get some adjustment kind of just leave it the higher position. I think that's pretty close to where it was before. We'll see how it is once we have the scooter started. And make sure it's got enough friction to hold everything in place. Don't have it too loose. Looks like it's all set there. So we'll reconnect some of these connections, the high beam. Uh, if these connections are loose, kind of no surprise, you may need to crimp the actual quick connection and push it down so it actually grabs onto the, the terminal. That's nice and tight. Let's see how this one is. One could use a little squeeze. And then you got the ground terminals shared between the two. So that's going to be your black. Again, they're always a little different every single headlight. Sometimes you got to use uh, some of your own ingenuity, and I can tell you, you could even use some trial and error. You're not going to really damage anything. If it's wrong, it's just not going to work. And then the last connection, which is our city light right here. And we'll get that bulb socket back in place. All right, so city light's coming on. We're doing good there. Make sure it's a neutral. There's our high beam. And the low beam looks good to me. I'll check it out at night when I take it on a test ride. Uh, some of the other things to do, here I'll dry that fuels. Perfect opportunity to spray a little grease on all of the, the pulleys in here. Don't want to get too uh, wild with the grease because um, it kind of makes a mess and drips everywhere, but that feels a lot smoother. Again, same with the shift cable pulleys right here. Just give them a little little bit of uh, spray grease. This is a nice uh, worth HHS, real nice product, but uh, there's plenty of other products that will work just as well. Uh, WD-40 isn't quite thick enough to stay behind. That's not going to do the trick, but something like TriFlow, that would work just as well. All right, and let's see how the Speedo cable is. Uh, it's pretty dry. So you pull that right straight out, and we'll just put a thin coat of grease on it. We use something like the Maxima grease, very little grease. You don't need much at all, just, just a small amount. If you over grease the cable, uh, sometimes it causes excess friction. It's not really needed. You don't need to necessarily lubricate the upper part of the cable because it's pretty straight once it's up there. It's mainly the lower part where it goes through the bend near the fork. Go ahead and feed it back down. And sometimes you'll have a little bit of uh, effort trying to get it past some of the bends. You sometimes push and twist through. If not, you may need to just move the whole cable housing up and down a little bit. And then right at the last point, you're gonna have to twist it to get that square to engage with the uh, um, speedometer drive gear in the hub. And if you're having a lot of trouble with it, you may just need to disconnect the cable from the bottom. All right, one thing about these is that nut usually wants to drop down into the fork tube, especially on the much older Vespas. And originally they had a little O-ring that's uh, long rotted away. And you could always put a little zip tie right on the bottom here. Just tighten it up and that keeps that nut from uh, wanting to drop down. 
And at that point, kind of have a uh, limited clearance right here, but we'll go ahead and start threading the nut back onto the bottom of the speedometer. The PX has actually had a plastic little quick connect clip that works a little better, a little more work to get off, but. All right, so the last thing I'll do for today is I'm gonna bleed and flush the front brakes. These are hydraulic brakes on these Stellas, just like the, the Millennium Edition later Vespas, I think starting 1998 is when they started putting disc brakes on the Vespas and the Stellas uh, pretty much followed. Let's pull the rubber diaphragm out. Ooh, that is some dark brake fluid there. And I've showed how to bleed brakes with just basic manual tools in the past. I do have a power bleeder, it just puts a vacuum. And we'll go ahead and suck all that fluid out, kind of clean the reservoir best we can. And I'll start with fresh fluid and pull that right through. So pretty much we'll just put it right onto the brake bleeder right down there. Get a wrench on there. So make sure that's cracked and then we'll go ahead and snap that in place. Wipe, that, wipe this all out here. in there. All right, rolling. Yeah. So I'm going to take a uh, fresh brake fluid, dot four brake fluid. We're going to fill the uh, brake reservoir, I would say about three quarters of the way up. Make sure we don't move the handlebars. And at this point, we'll go ahead and open up this bleeder valve and I'll turn the vacuum on. And this pulls a vacuum on the system and we're able to quickly flush the brake fluid through. So it's pushing fresh brake fluid through the system. And when the brake reservoir gets low with one of these power bleeders, just pull the brake lever in and that actually stops the flow of brake fluid. So just a little quick tip there and then you gotta do a top off. Usually I like to flush the, at least two reservoirs worth of brake fluid through, especially on a dirty system like this. And I think we're pretty good right there. So go ahead and close the valve. Clear valve, go ahead and pull the, the vacuum off. Not that noise anymore. Put the cap on. And we'll fill the brake fluid reservoir. Typically, if the brake pads are worn, you just want to fill it up to about where the window is. And that's as far as you want to go with the, the, the brake fluid here, so. Go right up to the window and that's perfect. So that's a little uh, reservoir level window. Sometimes they're not so clear after, you know, after the age quite a bit. And if there's any problems with the system, sometimes you just want to replace the whole master cylinder. I have a video coming soon on doing that on my own Vespa PX. And with a clean rag, just wipe around the brake reservoir if there's any extra fluid that's come through and the lever is nice and firm, feels good. The last thing to do sometimes is these pivots are getting a little dry. Doesn't hurt to give it a little grease in there. And that's all we need to do for the front brakes. I think they're good. I'll road test them and see how they work. We're gonna go ahead and replace some of the rubber bits on the scooter and start at the top and in the front. I'll tell you one thing, these ones don't need to be here. Finished Vespa's never had them. The little finisher plugs over the, the, um, the mirrors here. We'll just go ahead and cut those off. And that looks just fine without anything at all. Get those out of the way, throw them away. Nice and shiny chrome under there. But the one that does bug me is when you have wiring exposed. And this one was always the first one to rot away was the one on the front brake switch. Going to disconnect the two connections. Doesn't matter what order they go on. Just pull the little rubber boot right off. The wires here, or what's left of it. And we're going to replace it with the original Italian boot. Looks a little different. It's part number 126939. 
kind of a little bit of an accordion shape to it. And we'll go ahead and push the wires right through this little hole right here. And they're almost popping through right there. Only get a little bit of slack with this. The first one, first terminal on one of those blades in there. You may need to use uh, some needle nose pliers to get the second one on. And you kind of got to coax the, the terminal on as you push the boot on because it kind of stays with the, the wire, but it's going to look much tighter than. There you go, new boot. Looks a little better there. So you can see this is completely rotted. The rubber that surrounds the ignition lock, 178563. Kind of not much left of that. And some of these parts, sometimes you're better off putting them in boiling water to heat them up. But let's test our luck, see if we can get, just get that around the ignition lock here. And moving on down to the, the brake pedal. Let's see what we have left here. Uh, it's pretty crispy as well. Uh, for the original style waffle brake pedal, 182051. And this is a, a original Italian Ariete brand. So it's a nice quality one. It's gonna last quite a bit. Again, you may need to heat this up in some boiling water, but I think it's nice. It's supple enough that I'll be able to work it over the brake pedal there. Yeah, much better than this dried out thing. Look at that. Even with 1700 miles, it shows wear. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, kind of the first part of some refurbishment to this Amera Vespa 2023 raffle scooter. So let's take it on a maiden voyage. Uh, aired up the tires. They're older tires, but let's see what happens here. Much works.